WBAL held the first televised debate between the mayoral candidates. And if you thought that not having the candidates face to face was going to produce a boring debate, you were wrong. Because these candidates, even with the uh, current technology, still managed to throw some uh, jabs at one another. This is a trying time, and I do want to take a moment to commend the mayor as well as the governor for enlightening and keeping us apprised on this pandemic. Thank you. I think the most important thing is to make sure we have the public health safety net in place as we plan for economic recovery. Um, I'm doing everything that these uh, candidates are talking about. I have a COVID-19 recovery team in place. Uh, We did a COVID-19 small business task force that's in place right now. Uh, We have a partnership with uh, Goldman Sachs and Lindsay uh, for $10 million of forgivable uh, loans. And as the mayor of the city of Baltimore, we did a $5 million grant program for small businesses. And if you look at what I'm doing right now for COVID-19, everything that I'm doing, we're leading around the country. WBAL ran a good debate, keeping things on track. Candidates had to answer questions ranging from economic recovery. Um, People are calling Baltimore to find out what we're doing and how we're getting it done from coronavirus's uh, horrible pandemic. One of the things that we are going to have to do is a post-mortem on our COVID-19 response and see how we can improve upon that. Gun violence, education. So crime is number one. Number two is education. We are falling behind with our kids right now. School will not open for the rest of the remaining season. Some chose to accuse others of violating the public's trust. And I find it ironic that other people are talking about cutting taxes or gaining more from income taxes. Mary Miller uh, gave donations to Mitch McConnell the year after he dramatically reduced taxes uh, on the wealthiest people in our country. That is not the approach that Baltimore needs. I would not change the income tax rate in Baltimore. I would raise the base of income in the city by creating jobs here. The Democrats in this race made some very bold proclamations. I want to do my eight years as mayor. And when I hand it off to the next mayor, I want them to be able to build upon even better gains than what we made. That's what we have to do. And we have to hold the educational system and dollars accountable. Brandon Scott had some thoughts on the coronavirus and how it would be handled under his leadership. Making sure we have racial and zip code data, but also being the first in this race to put out a plan that talks about how we can deal with COVID now and after. And if you look at what I'm doing right now for COVID-19, everything that I'm doing, we're leading around the country. Baltimore's Mayor Jack Young wanted to talk about the consent decree and how he pushed it through. Um, We have done a lot. Um, They say nothing has happened. Um, Because of this um, uh, death of Freddie Gray, there has been the consent decree, which I put for the consent decree. There's body cameras on police officers now uh, that I pushed for and got passed through the council. Jack Young is trying to sell voters on the idea that he's in charge now. You don't want to take things off of the path that they're on. And he's kind of a stable leadership that you have already gotten used to. That's how he's trying to sell his candidacy to Baltimore. And Sheila Dixon is trying to return or get people to get the idea that she wants to return to a time when things were better. Part of the challenge that we face in the city is politics because the ideas of family strengthening did not come from a particular mayor or whatever then people want to throw it away instead of building on it. We've got to get away from the politics and look at where we are successful and build on that. What's a debate without some good old fashioned mudslinging? Uh, Personally, as the only graduate of City Public Schools and this millennial in this race, what it mean? How it feels to go to those air conditions? What it means to not have here, Jason, do you want and me to start? Yeah, Mr. Scott, hold one second. And Mayor, if you could, if you could mute your phone, I appreciate it, sir. I did. Okay, thank I just you. Did. Thank you, Brandon. Well, we're you gonna... know I'm still running the city. I, I, you know, I, I, I hear you, sir. I hear you, sir, but I need you to hold tight okay. for me. Brandon, we're going to reset here. And go, go ahead with that question, please. 
TJ Smith has uh, presented himself to be what he is, a man of the people and someone who is a blue collar. Uh, I've been in law enforcement for a number of years, and there's never been a single brooch of my integrity or ethics. There hasn't been a hidden camera crew following me around. There hasn't been uh, other videos that I've been subject to. Um, there are other candidates who've dealt with that. Um, I haven't misused the public trust, and I've tried to be as transparent as I possibly can. Many people in Baltimore have seen commercials on television uh, of Mary Miller. She's been spending a lot of money and she was called out about her support or her donations in the past. He referenced a political contribution from decades ago. I certainly don't support Mitch McConnell, nor do I approve of President Trump's recent tax cuts. I want to be clear. The reduction of crime is something that every mayor in every city has to face and has to account for. How different would my life and the life of my friends be if we had fully invested in education when I was a kid? City politicians have had their chance. They've talked about this. They've used the platitudes and the sound butts, bites, but nothing has changed. They haven't led, I will. Current mayor, Jack Young, and former mayor, Sheila Dixon, traded barbs back and forth about crime fighting, strategies. Sheila Dixon said this. We have to make sure that our police department is equipped to have the kind of expertise to go and track those guns, illegal guns. We should not be talking about this issue today. If we had kept a structure in place that was working and successful in this city. Coming from the former mayor, Sheila Dixon, this is a, a very bold claim. And Jack Young, to his credit, did not take it lying down. I'm paying for her gun trace task force right now that I can use that money to spend somewhere else. That was not a jab. That was like a hook. Um, and it definitely he is referring to the infamous gun trace task force, which was created during Sheila Dixon's time as mayor. Uh, to her credit, she did not create this and convicted members testified that they committed crimes during her term. However, they didn't only commit crimes during her term. There were other terms that they committed crimes. Sheila Dixon, the former mayor, maintains that she had no knowledge of their criminal activity. So I definitely want to commend WBAL and Jason Newton for his handling and moderating of this debate in a definite different time. This was handled well in a time of crisis and pandemic because things still have to go on. We still have to elect Baltimore's next mayor. And I uh, definitely want to salute WBAL and the Democratic candidates that participated in this debate. Shemaine Diamond K, of course, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, at the Diamond K Show, at Radio on Fire. And uh, however you are seeing or hearing this show, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and I will see you guys tomorrow.